In this video, video we're going to introduce you to the standard deviation. Uh, I'll do some explanation and we'll, we'll use this formula to calculate it. We'll do examples 1, 2, uh, 3 and 4. Okay, so let's begin. So we already know the formula for the mean and we usually write the Greek letter mu for the mean. So given the numbers List of numbers, this is how you calculate the mean, right? Where n is the how many numbers you have. Now this is the stump number for the standard deviation. So what is the standard deviation? So it's simply a measure that is used to quantify the amount of variation or dispersion in a set of data values. Or to put simply, it's just a measure of how spread out a set of data is. Okay? And it, where did it come from? Well, it was made up by a mathematician called Carl Pearson in 1893, and the whole world has been using it ever since. The whole world agrees that we will use this formula to describe how far apart a list of numbers are. Okay? So, without going on further, let me just do a couple of examples with you. So you see that it's actually not that complicated, and you can do this, no problem. Okay? So we'll do examples one and two right now. We'll start with example one. So let's say we have a set of test scores in an English class. They're 77%, 79%, 80%, 81%, 85%. So how many scores do we have? One, two, three, four, five, for five students. Five scores, five students, right? Okay, so first thing we need to do, if we want to get the standard deviation, First thing you have to calculate is the mean mu because that pops up in this formula a lot, doesn't it? So we're going to calculate the mean first. So the mean mu is written like this. Uh, mu is a Greek letter and you go up like that and then around and then down. So mu equals and then you just add up the numbers and divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So just add all the numbers on the top and then divide by 5 and you can use your calculator. Okay, so hopefully you'll get that they all add up to be 400 and then divide by 5 and you get... ...80, right? So that's the mean. Now we'll calculate standard deviation. I'm going to go down here on purpose because I want a little bit of space up here for calculations. You'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to go standard deviation sigma and that's just a circle, a little line across equals and it's a big square root. Okay and we just take each number, we subtract the mean and then we square it. So we take x1, subtract the mean, square it. And then add x2, subtract the mean, and square it. What does that mean? Well, these are the numbers here. 77 would be x1. 79 is x2. 80 is x3. 81 is x4. And 83 is x5. Simply the first number, the second number, the third number, the fourth number, the fifth number. So we take each number. So we start with say 77 and we subtract the mean which is 80 and then we square it. And then we add. Take the next number, subtract the mean, square it. Take the next number, subtract the mean, square it. Right? So just keep going along like that. So see if you can fill this out. One, two, three, need one more. Okay, so take, take each number in turn. So there's 80, and then we've got 81, then we've got 83. Okay, and we then just divide all of that by what? Divide it all by n, and n is just the number of data points we have. One, two, three, four, five. So that's how you set up the formula. I hope it didn't it's it's 
it looks a little less complicated than here. See, that looks really fancy, doesn't it? But it really, hopefully, you can see it's not that it's not that big of a deal. Now, here's a tip on calculating this. Instead of see, what you could do at this point is you could go, okay, I'm going to go big square root and calculate each little bit by bit. So 77 minus 80, that's negative 3. And then I'm going to square that and I'm going to add all that stuff up. And then I'm going to divide by 5. And then I'm going to write out another big square root. Because look, negative 3 squared is 9. And I'm going to add. Then I'm going to divide by 5. And then I'm going to add all these up and divide by 5. And if you do it this way, you're just going to have to write out a whole bunch of big square roots. You can do it that way, but it's a little messy. So personally, I prefer to simplify all of the top on its own first, just to make it simple, and then I'm going to put it back in the square root. So in other words, just to be clear, just to be clear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate what's on the top, and then I'm going to divide by 5. See? I'll calculate what's on top, then divide by 5. So what I'm saying is I'm going to take 77 minus 80, and then I'm going to square it. What's that? So it's negative 3, and just do this step by step, negative 3 squared, right? Then I'm going to go 79 minus 80 is negative 1, square that. And what's 80 minus 80? That's 0, I need to square that. And then I've got 81 minus 80, that's 1, I need to square that. And then 83 minus 80, that's 3, we need to square that, right? So then we come along, we're going to square each one of these. So negative 3 squared is, by the way, that's actually negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9, right? Plus, what's negative 1 squared? That's actually negative 1 times negative 1, which gives positive 1. Plus 0 squared is what? 0 plus 1 squared, 1, plus 3 squared, 9. Okay? So just add all these up. 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 0 is 10, plus 1 is 11, plus 9 is 20. So all of this top now has turned into simply the number 20, right? And you're very welcome to just write it all out and keep doing the big square roots if you want to, but I find this is a little shorter. Right? So root 20 over 5 makes what? Now calculate 20 over 5. 4. And square root of 4 is 2. So our mean was 80. Our standard deviation was 2. Mean means the average. The average score of the class, the 5 students, was 80%. Standard deviation means how much were they spread out? Well, they weren't spread out that much at all because the standard deviation was 2. Okay? And um, we'll, we'll go on to the next uh, problem, I guess. But before we go, I, I guess it's just one thing I can't resist talking about, which is, you know, why, why did we have to use that formula? I mean, if we're just measuring the, the average spread, I mean, you know, like if you looked at those numbers, um, 77, 79, uh, 80, 81, 83, like, like this number is a distance of 1, you know, this number is a distance of 3, this number is a distance of 1, and this number is a distance of 3, right? And so, so why can't we say that the, if, if we add them all up, 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3, which is uh, 1, 2, that's 4, um, Five. That's that's eight. Why can't we say, look, there was, um, you know, eight. To, and eight. If we divide that by, say, the number of numbers, say, there's five numbers. Eight over five gives, um, you know, one point six. Why can't we say the standard deviation is one point six? Well, you know, you could say that if you wanted to, but that's not what the world says, right? <laughs> the world wants us to use that formula. Why? Because everybody understands um, that that is the, the standard way to measure spread of numbers. Not this way, not some simple way. Okay? 
Uh, that's one explanation. The other explanation is it's connected to what we're going to study next, which is the normal distribution. Okay, so it's important for um, for for situations where we'll talk about it later. But but there's two reasons. But let, let's just leave it at that for now. This is the standard way of measuring a spread of, of numbers. Now we'll do example two. Find the mean and standard deviation of the following list of math test scores. 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100 percent. Okay? So uh, let's do this together. First we're going to find the mean and then the standard deviation. I'm actually going to fold this page because I just want you guys to look at the formulas and this at the same time. Right? There we go. All right. So first we're going to get the mean. Mu equals, we add up all the numbers, x1 plus x2 plus x3, 60 plus 70 plus 80 plus 90 plus 100, and we divide by n. How many there are? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and you can do that in the calculator. 860 plus 70 plus 80 plus 90, so add up the top. We should get 400 divided by 5 gives 80, right? So now let's get standard deviation. And again, I'm going to go down so I've got room to calculate. Sigma equals big square root. Then I just take each number subtract the mean and square it, right? So again, this is the first number, second number, third number, fourth number, and fifth number. So essentially that's x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, okay? So I take the first number, 60, x1. I subtract the mean, which again is 80. And I square it. Then I take the next number. What's the next number? X2, 70, subtract the mean, and I square it. And then what? Press pause and see if you can finish off this line. Just, just, just finish off the top of the fraction here. OK, I hope you've tried it. So I'm hoping that you've figured out we need to write 80 minus 80 and square that. And keep going. Okay, and then what do we do? We divide the whole thing by n, the number of points we have, number of data, data points, five. Okay. So sixty minus eighty, and again, like I said before. We could, if we wanted to, keep writing out the big square roots. So we could go big square root of negative 20 squared. Keep adding that stuff up. Then divide by 5, which equals big square root of 400 plus. Keep adding that stuff up. Then divide by 5, which equals big square root. We could keep going like that if we wanted to, but I want to avoid having to write out the big square root over and over and over. You can do that if you want to. That's fine. Um, but I guess I'm just going to uh, calculate the top and then divide by 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate wherever the top is and then divide it by 5. Right? So if I take the top, 60 minus 80, that's negative 20 squared. And then we've got 70 minus 80, which is what? Right? So please press pause and at least finish off this line to here. All the squares, add them all up. Okay, I'll do it now. So this should be negative 10 squared. This should be 0 squared. This should be 10 squared. And this should be 20 squared, right? And now we need to calculate each one, right? Just be careful because this is negative 20 squared, which makes negative 20 times negative 20, which is? positive 400, right? 
So 400 plus and then negative 10 squared is what? That's negative 10 times negative 10 positive 100 and then add up the others. 0 squared is 0, 10 squared is 100, 20 squared is 400, right? So what does the top of the fraction make altogether? So 400, 100, that's 500, 600, and what do we get in the top of the fraction? So the top of the fraction we should have 1,000. So we've got square root of 1,000 over 5. Now 1,000 over 5 is what? $1,000 divided among 5 people. Each person gets $200. Right? And we'll put that in the calculator. So square root of 200 gives that. Um, make sure your calculator is in the right mode because for example um, your mode could be like math print depend on your calculator right if your mode was math print then uh, square root of 200 would give us 10 root 2 which is fine it's just we want the actual decimal number for these real life examples okay so we want classic now your calculator might be different but all I'm saying is um, watch out for the uh, mode of your calculator when you're when you're calculating these things and, and contact me if you need help with it. So 14.14 about is what we have. So square root of 200 is about 14.14 or in fact let's just round it to the nearest whole number because we're just talking about test scores. 14 or indeed 14 percent would probably be the thing. Okay so so let's go back over the two examples. The first example was a list of English test scores and they were very um, close together. Even though they had the same, so their mean was 80, the standard deviation was 2, right? But when we went over the math scores, the mean was the same as the English, 80. But the difference is the standard deviation was about about 14, right? So the point is that comparing these um, tests, they both had the same mean, 80% each, but using the standard deviation formula, we were able to show that that the, you know, the, they did very, it, it, it's a measure of how much they varied. And obviously they varied from 60 to 100 was what the math was, and it has a standard deviation of 14. And obviously the English didn't vary much from 77 to 83, a standard deviation of only about 2, right? But that's the standard way of measuring the spread of a list of numbers. So actually the last thing I'd like to do in this video is example 3. Find the mean and standard deviation of the following list of biology group project scores. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. Okay? So please press pause and let's use the formulas and see if you can calculate the mean and standard deviation for these scores for these five students. So please press pause and do it just for fun. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. So the mean mu equals, add them all up, 80 plus 80 plus 80 plus 80 plus 80 all over 5. There's 5 scores, no surprise. That makes 400 over 5, which is 80. No surprise. If they all scored 80, well, then the mean is definitely 80, right? Now, the standard deviation. I hope you've tried to calculate it, but even if you haven't, what do you think it should be? What do you think the average distance from the mean is? Think about it. So anyway, if we calculate the standard deviation in this case, we would get big square root of, we take each number in turn. So the first data point is 80. We subtract the mean of 80 and then we square it. Then we take the next data point of 80, subtract the mean of 80 and square it. And then we take the next data point of 
80 subtract the mean and square it and we just keep going like this right okay and that's all divided by 5 okay so what does that give us well if we add the tops up we get 80 minus 80 0 squared plus 80 minus 80 0 squared plus 0 squared and so on right so that gives us 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 0 squared what does the top make? if you add all the top up you get 0 then it's all over 5 so what does that equal? 0 divided by 5 is 0. And what's the square root of 0? In other words, what number times itself will give us 0? What times itself gives 0? Well, 0 times 0 equals 0. So square root of 0 is 0. So no surprise here. If, if you've got a biology group project, there's 5 students, they're all given a grade of 80. The mean score is 80. The standard deviation is 0 because they don't vary from the mean at all. They're all exactly at the mean. Make sense?